It is almost Super Bowl Sunday, and the Chiefs and Buccaneers are getting ready to take the field, but they aren't the only ones prepping for the big game. Of course, each team's cheerleaders will be there as well. And while cheerleading for a pro football team seems pretty glamorous, behind the scenes, it can be anything but. Cheerleaders have reported low wages, pay theft, and rampant abuse, among other charges, leading some of the women to sue the very teams they work for. A new documentary, A Woman's Work, explores the dark side of NFL cheerleading and the women who fought back. Take a look. Game day doesn't completely make up for the fact that we work for nine months straight with no paycheck. You want me to volunteer my time so you can make money? Why would a grown woman want to be a cheerleader anyway? Show off your body. We had to stand there and do jumping jacks. Sometimes there was just nothing you could do. You're not cheering this game. They don't treat football players this way. They don't even treat mascots this way. Joining me now is Lacey Thibodeau-Fields, who you just saw in that clip there. She's a former Oakland Raiders cheerleader who sued the team. And with her is the director of Women's Work, Wigu. Welcome to both of you. Thank you both so much for being here with us. Lacey, I want to start with you. What were the working conditions like for you as a pro football cheerleader that led you and eventually others to sue? Well, um, being an NFL cheerleader was exhilarating. It was honestly some of the best memories that I've, I can think of in my lifetime. Um, it quickly became very frustrating for me, though. I had just made the team, and very quickly I was spending lots of money. I had a young family at the time, and my part-time job that I had you know, just signed up for was quickly becoming a burden to me. Um, I was having tons of out-of-pocket expenses. It was time away from my family, which I was very happy to do and dedicate my talents to the team. Um, but, you know, they weren't going to pay us till the end of the season. And just things throughout the season kept popping up, and I thought, this isn't right, you know. Um, this can't be legal, and it surely wasn't legal in the state of California. Wow. And, and let's bring we in. We one problem that you highlight are the restrictive contracts that all cheerleaders must sign throughout the league. Tell me about those. Right. So for Lacey's contract, I mean, when her employment lawyers looked at it, they said that it was the most illegal contract they've ever seen in the 25 year experience of them being attorneys. So, you know, everything from being paid at the end of this nine month season um, to getting fined for minor infractions to adhering to extreme standards and rules um, as outlined by their handbooks. Um, that's something that, you know, when they're given this contract, they're not allowed. They don't have time to speak with an attorney or any agents or any other representative they're they're basically forced to sign it on the spot wow and and for a lawyer to say it was one of the most illegal contracts that they've ever seen is really eye-opening Lacey, you and 100 other women who joined your lawsuit settled with the raiders for 1.25 million dollars the other terms are still confidential what do you think is the impact of of that of the confidential terms of the the settlement on women who are still cheering today well, I, I have heard some encouraging things from the women that are still cheering today that they have changed the contract since the lawsuit. They are being paid every two weeks. I know that they have a new director now from when I was there. And I've heard some really positive things from the Raiderettes that are you know, continuing on the team of the changes that have been made. I can't speak for the other teams, um, but I really hope that they you know, took the lawsuit and really made the change they need to so that they can really appreciate the dancers that you know we gave all of our talent to them and all of our time and energy. And it's about time that they show that they appreciate that and, and pay us properly. And we, this project represents so much more than a fight for cheerleaders. It's about a woman's value in the workplace. And even today, the pandemic has brought so many of these issues to the forefront. So many women disproportionately impacted by this. Talk to me about the, the overall issue here. Right. Um, I think... A woman's work, you know, as it's been labeled traditionally, has been devalued. It has been seen as something that is, you know, a derogatory term. Um, and especially, like you mentioned, now during the pandemic, when women are leaving the workforce in order to in order to care for family, for children, um, you see that work being unacknowledged and sort of, you know, devalued again. So I think it's it's part of a larger conversation on how we as a society treat this kind 
kind of labor and how we would want to value it and also, you know, value the women who are giving it all to both society and to their families. And Lacey, of course, so many people will be watching the Super Bowl this Sunday. They will see the amazing women along the sidelines. Tell me, when when the game gets started, when, when we see the ball kicked off for the beginning of the Super Bowl, what will you be thinking? And what do you want the millions of viewers tuning in to know? Well, you know, in, in no way would I want to tarnish the glamorous image of an NFL cheerleader. I know by exposing the ugly truth of what was really going on, some people may have felt like, you know, ashamed of what I've done, um, that I've maybe tarnished the image, but I did not. I just shed a light on a, a real issue that NFL cheerleaders have to face. You know, the audition process is so strenuous. They want a girl that could speak eloquently, who's educated, who can kind of do it all, be out in the community, be a great dancer, have the perfect body. You know, they want the girl that can just, you know, represent them to the best of their abilities. And yet they want to, you know, tell us over and over again, well, you're just lucky to be here. You know, this is the chance of a lifetime. You just get to be on the field. You should be happy for that. And I've always felt, and I know that other cheerleaders out there feel, you know what? We do give all that we have to you. I wish that you would really appreciate that and, and treat us like a true employee and, and pay us properly and make us feel part of the family. And we will learn so much about what it is like to be an NFL cheerleader through this film called A Woman's Work. Lacey and we thank you both so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.